Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael, and in this very first podcast episode on this channel, we are dealing with the topic, Does Microsoft Deserves More Respect for Its Contribution to Linux and Open Source Software Than Apple? Let's go! Open Source Software is much more widely recognized today than it was 10 years ago. Ridiculated at the time as an unprofessional hobby software by geeks and nerds for geeks and nerds, Today, a large part of all relevant infrastructure is operated with open source components. The GNU Linux operating system is mentioned here as an example as the flagship of the triumph of open source software. However, Linux is part of the FOSS family, but FOSS is not the same as Linux. Just like every Duxent is a dog, but not every dog is a Duxent. Linux is certainly a big piece of the pie, but there are many more FOSS projects that are no less important or relevant are. But if you are now wondering what FOSS is supposed to be, here is a small digression. FOSS stands for Free and Open Source Software. This includes all software whose source code can be viewed freely and which can also be further processed and reused thanks to licenses specially available for this purpose. Everyone can also participate, be it as a developer, graphic artist, designer, administrator or as a figurehead of the projects at events, for example. FOSS is therefore a collective term for the entire stock of free and open source software. Who is behind the FOSS projects? This is very different. On the one hand, there are volunteer developers on board, but there are also professional developers who work full time. Some companies hire or release employees for this. Other companies hire employees for precisely this purpose of employment. But it's also not an either or, so not just either private developers or full-time developers. In many projects, the cooperation goes hand in hand worldwide. The development of open source software can, but does not have to, follow the sun principle. FOSS projects are partially supervised and managed by non-profit organizations. Examples include the Mozilla Foundation, which oversees Firefox, or the Signal Foundation, which develops the popular Signal Messenger. However, there are also companies that support the Linux platform with non-open source software, also called proprietary software, for example. This is also a contribution to Linux because the availability of certain exclusive software also increases the attractiveness, visibility and practicality of the Linux platform in general. An example of this is to mention the availability of Microsoft Edge browser for Linux. For many private users, uh, think of the unimaginable, is a Microsoft browser to be installed on the Linux system. Understandable. After all, the relationship between Microsoft and the FOSS community has not always been harmonious in the past. The former CEO of Microsoft, Steve Ballmer, even described Linux as a cancerous growth. But as we know, not every candle on the cake shines equal bright. So, current Microsoft CEO Nadella takes a more sane and far-reaching view. Because today, they say, Microsoft loves Linux. And it's obvious that this is not just a kind of empty promises. The Edge browser is often an entry ticket into the Microsoft world, especially in the business and enterprise environment. Microsoft is still the undisputed industry leader here with Office 365, its collaboration solutions such as SharePoint or Microsoft Teams. Thanks to Edge for Linux, Linux users can also participate in this world, since Edge offers the appropriate tools for this. We already see that Microsoft's commitment is generally visible for FOSS and Linux, even if the practical use is not fully comprehensive. But what is actually diving Apple with regards to FOSS? After all, Apple is also a large software manufacturer, e.g. with iOS, iPadOS or macOS operating systems. Even Apple is not completely idle, even if its visibility and the resulting perception are different. Apple is involved in FOSS even though the operating systems just mentioned represent proprietary software. 
elsewhere, such as the Swish programming language or Safari rendering engine, WebKit are certainly larger and well-known products that are open source. Apple's involvement appears to be more subtle than Microsoft's. What kind of commitment does Microsoft have in FOSS environment? Microsoft loves Linux. This credo suggests that Microsoft has changed its approach to FOSS. Open source software will be viewed by Microsoft today as an important element and significant innovation driver for IT. The Microsoft Cloud Platform, Azure, is widely supported Linux and Windows equally. By acquiring GitHub, Microsoft wants to demonstrate its confidence in the development of open source software projects by adopting the platform for it. Microsoft itself operates an overview page of features projects. This includes Azure SDKs, Visual Studio Code, TrueScript, Windows Terminal, PowerShell or .NET. What commitment does Apple have in FOSS environment? As already briefly mentioned, Swift and WebKit are Apple's flagship projects as they came from Apple as company. The known operating systems from Apple are also partly set up as open source software thanks to the so-called Darwin substructure. Means parts of e.g. macOS, iOS or iPadOS are also published as FOSS, but not all components are free. What is not released under the Darwin framework remains entirely under Apple's control. Apple not only maintains FOSS projects, but also supports other projects such as Kubernetes, the Apache Cassandra database, the compiler architecture LMVM Clang, Apache Spark, Netty and Apache Solar. Who gives more to or who benefits more from FOSS? The proportion between give and take is difficult to determine without having analyzed the complete source code, including all additional components. The fact is that the proprietary operating systems, Windows and macOS are not free of open source software. For example, macOS uses the XNU kernel, but also WebKit, the FoundationDB database, as well as Apache, OpenLDAP, OpenSSH, OpenSSL or CUPS. For Windows, on the other hand, there would be the cross-platform development environment.net, the Edge browser built on top of the Chromium's open source render engine or PowerShell. Whether the two companies now include more from other FOSS projects in their own operating systems than they return in the form of patches and so on cannot be accessed from the outside in a qualified manner. This may depend on the individual case. For example, the PowerShell or Visual Studio development team might give more than they take than the Windows kernel team, for example. This is not reliable information, just an assumption. Only Microsoft or Apple could answer that. And hardly, at the moment, Microsoft seems to be acting more around FOSS than Apple. Apple continues to strive to keep its lucrative product range as an as closed as possible ecosystem. For example, iTunes is still only available for Windows, not for Linux. Long since dissolved under macOS and the functions divided between various other apps such as Finder or Music, Windows-based iTunes continues to lag behind. Apple doesn't seem to have anything left for Linux here. So you still can't back up or sync your iPhone or iPad with Linux. Safari is also not available for Linux. Apple's former iWork Office Suite is available exclusively for macOS and iOS and iPadOS. Final Cut Pro for macOS only. Motion for macOS only. These are just a few examples. Apple Music Client for Linux? None. While Apple selectively supports FOSS projects, Apple ignores Linux completely. Some time ago, Microsoft took a significantly different and more Linux-friendly course. Of course, there are not all Microsoft apps available for Linux. This also seems to have been a reversal with the demise of Microsoft Teams for Linux, but as we know, appearances can be deceptive so far. Because instead of excluding Teams for Linux, the Teams PWA, which stands for Progressive Web App, was introduced. Teams can thus be used as an almost native app via the Microsoft Edge browser and with a better range of functions than the previous Electron-based Teams app. To be fair, however, it must also be mentioned that the Teams PWA is also supported for Google's Chrome, an example, not exclusively for Edge.
But Microsoft not only supports various FOSS projects, but also noticeable does something for Linux. Because Linux as a desktop solution is given the opportunity to fully enter the Microsoft Cloud Cosmos for the first time. For companies, the Microsoft 365 solution is often be the standard. Thanks to Edge for Linux, not only Microsoft Teams is supported, but also the Cloud Office from Microsoft and thus also the possibility of collaboration based on the Microsoft Cloud environment. Office documents can now also be shared with Linux users and edited by them in real time via the online office. Perhaps uninteresting for private users with LibreOffice, but definitely a game changer for companies with Linux desktop. So we are nearly at the end of this podcast and we come to the question of whether Microsoft deserves more respect than Apple for its support for FOSS and Linux. We don't want to compare apples with oranges, but for me as a Linux user, Microsoft's commitment clearly overrides Apple's. Apple's contribution to various FOSS projects is commendable and good, but Microsoft focuses far more on Linux than Apple and there is still room for improvements for Apple EG with the missing iTunes or Apple Music client for Linux. But well, Android manufacturers are happy when Linux users buy their devices and Spotify also has subscribers with Linux operating system because there is also a desktop client for Linux. There is an alternative for everything and, as we just seen, it's often not even accompanied by a trade-off. It should be noted that neither Apple nor Microsoft are open source companies. Both companies have potentially overlapping business areas. Yeah, we're not in the 80s anymore. Microsoft's contribution to the FOSS environment and Linux is not out of affection either, but to strengthen its own product range. This is not unusual for a company. With the availability of Microsoft Edge, the Linux platform only participates in Microsoft's value chain. It is therefore possible for Linux users to install and use Edge EG in a school or a company environment. For private users, the need of this is different. There are various alternatives that are may better tailored to the needs of the privacy-sensitive users. Mozilla Firefox, LibreWolf or Ungoogle Chromium should be the choices here. Does Microsoft do more for FOSS and Linux than Apple and deserve more respect? Or do you see that as a danger in general? Please let me know how you see it. That was today's and in general the first podcast episode on this channel. Thank you for your kind attention and see you hopefully soon. Bye.